Hi, I'm Sandra. I'm an illustrator and surface pattern designer. And today we're going to be painting this Father Day's card. I want to do it with very simple materials. I'm going to use my watercolors. I have a mix of Sennelier and Daniel Smith in here. And I just have this water brush and I have these two pencils. They're Lumograph Black. They're great because when you scan them, they don't shine. So if you do this with normal pencils and you scan your illustration, the normal pencil projects light and it shines and it sometimes doesn't look as black. So these are great if you're going to scan your artwork. I also just love them for drawing because they're super dark. And I have this Figma Micron and I'm just going to use these for some little details and for the lettering. And just an eraser and a paper towel. Oh, and I have my little color chart of my palette here so that I know what the colors look like because if you see this here, it's really hard to see what colors they are. So this is super useful. And I'm just going to use these to mix. So we're going to do this very minimalistic as if we were working from a coffee shop. I have my sketch ready. And if you want to paint this sketch along with me, make sure that you sign up to my newsletter. I'll leave the link in the description and there you'll get the sketch and other sketches for my other YouTube videos and tons of other freebies. You can also stop the video and just make your own sketch and work with your own sketch. I created this little bear because it reminds me of my dad. He's always wearing a vest and I love him to beats. So I'm going to put this here so you can see what colors I'm using and I don't need any water because the water is already in my water brush. This one has a fine tip. I've been using it for years. And if you get one of these, make sure that when you fill it out, you open it the other way around because it's not like American side. It opens to the other side. Uh, it took me a while to figure that out. And I'm like, why can't I open this thing? And it's really easy. It's just turn it to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to push. And when I push, the water is going to come out. And I can dry that here. I like to paint my watercolors very controlled. If you've seen me paint watercolors before, you'll know that. So that means that I don't add a lot of water. Uh, that is also why I can paint in mm, thinner papers. This one's actually not thin. It's Fabriano and it's hot press, which is great because it's very smooth, but it's only 25% cotton. So if you like to paint in 100% cotton, this one is not it, but I find that this one is very good, very smooth. And I usually don't paint watercolors to sell originals. I just use them to scan. In this case, I can give this one to my dad, uh, but I don't worry about the paper that much. If you're producing originals for a gallery, then it's different or to sell. And I have drawn it here. I might fold it. I don't know how this paper will fold. I think it's too thick to fold, so I might just cut it here and then attach it to a card or just even give him this. Just have that in mind where you draw your sketch in case your paper actually folds. So I'm just placing some color and then dragging this out before it dries. So I'm going to go over this and I'm not letting any of the edges dry. And when painting watercolors, I like to go very light and then start adding more and more layers to create darker areas. If the brush is, has too much water, just dry it out. And I'm just filling these areas in for the little ears. So I'm going to go in now and add a bit of a darker color in here. And just blend it out like this. The water in the brush will blend it out. And if you dry your brush and you go over it, it will blend it a bit more. I'm going to 
at the hands here. So these are the dad's hands. And these are the kids' hands. And if that's too dark, just dry your brush. Touch it, dry your brush. Oh, I have my paper towel here. I'll put it here so you can see it. Dry it. And this is easier to do with a non-water brush because then my brush will be really dry, but because it has water, it's not super dry. So it doesn't dry that as fast. But it works. I'm going to add a bit more color in there. And maybe here in his neck. The neck should be darker because it's like casting a shadow the head. And while that dries, I'm going to paint another area that is not touching. So I'm going to paint the feet. And also you can just touch it with the edge of your napkin or paper towel and dry it out. And while that dries, I am going to paint the balloon. So the story with this balloon is my dad used to take me to the zoo and I would always ask for a balloon, but the balloons were super expensive at the zoo. So my dad would always say no. And then one day my dad actually said yes. And I was so excited. And uh, something really bad happened. We were going to the monkey enclosure and... They could poke their hands out. They were used to people like feeding them. And once we were walking through there, a monkey popped my balloon. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever cried so much. So my dad will remember that story when he sees the balloon. And that's why there's a random balloon tied up here on the floor. And uh, make sure that you add personal things like that, especially if you're creating something like this for a loved one. Those little special details will make it extra special. And even like I could add this card to my licensing portfolio and people don't need to know the story about the balloon. The balloon here might look a bit weird, but <laughs> uh, clients could just think it's just a balloon. Uh, I could make this a little gift to make it more commercial and that way like it'll be like a gift for dad. I will actually do that. And you see that here I, I added a lot of paint, like dropped it in. That actually has more water than I usually paint with because for the balloon I do want some like texture there. So I want the ink, well the watercolor to run around however it wants. And to tie this red balloon in, I'm going to make his shirt red also. And this is a pretty aggressive red. So I'm going to water it down. I want to move this red over here so I'm like, see, I'm pushing it away because I don't want this part to be like super, super dark. And I want this area to have a bit more red. So I'll bring in more color. And the trick with watercolors is to control the amount of water because the amount of water is what's going to make the paint run. And also what's going to make your color be dark or light. I think I'm going to create his jeans with this color. I love this color. It's called Munglo by Daniel Smith, but um, it's a bit light fast. So that means that it will start fading in the light. 
So if you're going to create an original illustration, light fast colors are not the best to use. But if you're creating something like this, that's a gift and it's going to be stored in an album or somewhere where the light doesn't hit it permanently, or if it's going to be scanned, then you can use whatever colors you want. Okay, great. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the base for everything, and then we're going to go back in and add some shadows and add some details. I'm going to paint the little kid, which would be me. And I'm guessing it's going to be, let's use this Venetian, Venetian red, which if you see, it's similar to the burnt sienna, but it's a bit redder. Uh, just so it's a tiny bit different from the dad. And see this last drop of watercolor? That's what's going to be the darkest. So I'm dragging it down here so this area is darker. And I'm going to go in with a bit more color. And I'm wiping my brush constantly so that I can blend this in. And I think that works. I'm going to erase this here and make a little gift. And then the balloon is tied up there. I need to get a nice steel color. I actually just bought a Sennelier one and I haven't tried it yet. This one, I think it's a bit granulating, so it creates some texture when it dries. I want to find a smooth one, so I think the Sennelier will be better for that. But this is a very nice color. And I'm going to add a bit of darker blue here. And if you're not sure of a color, just swatch it like in the corner of your paper before you put it in, in your painting. So I'm adding this darker brown here for the body. And I'm just going slowly. I'm not overthinking it, just filling in the shapes. With watercolor, the more you practice, the easier it will get. I guess with everything, it's the same thing. So don't worry. If at the beginning it's hard or even like controlling your brush just keep practicing that is a bit dark and aggressive <laughs> but what can we do it's there already the only thing i can do is like try to add a bit more water here to lighten it up i think that works well and i actually forgot to like the feet should be here 
so now I'm going to color in those feet. Because the kid's standing on the shoulders, so now it has feet. And now I'm going to make the snout. So see that when I'm changing colors, I just press, I just press the brush and then like wipe it and then it's clean. So then I can change colors really easily. And here I want my brush to be kind of dry. So I'm going to create this snout here. I don't want it to be super, super dark. So it has too much water, so I can just press and that will make it lighter. Great. And now I think I can paint the vest, which will be a mix again of the teal and the blue. I'm just filling it in and being careful here on the sides where it touches the shirt so that I don't go over into that red. And then I can grab a bit more color. And here in these areas, I sometimes do add more water. You'll see that here I'm letting the brush get like a bit more wet and uh, letting the pigment run because here's what I was saying about that granulating pigment, it creates that sort of texture. Okay, great. Now I want to do the edges of the shirt. That's not called edges, the sleeves. If I wasn't recording, I'd be turning this paper constantly, so it's easier for me to glide my hand. But because I'm recording and I don't want to make you dizzy, like turning these constantly, I'm keeping it like this, but it's so much easier if you can turn the paper constantly. Okay, I have a cat hair here. This should have waited until it was dry. So if that happens, you just go in with some water and you kind of move the paint around. And it's like nothing happens. Just have to embrace the mistakes. I'm going to add some color to the ground. And I'm thinking I want to keep this very like monochromatic. So I'm thinking this kinacrid on gold. And I'm going to see how that looks here before I put it there. Maybe if I touch a bit of the brown. Yeah, I like that. So I'm just going to go like this. Clean my brush. And this is still wet, the face, because see, this spilled out. So now I'm going to go back in. And again, with water, I'm drying my brush. Just finish fixing that. And now I'm going to have to be very patient and wait for the face to draw, to dry. I was going to make some little cheeks, but now I can't. So I'm going to go in here and paint the little snout also. 
Let's make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to make also the insides of the ears darker. And now, while that dries, I can start working on the text. This is a 0 0.005, so it's super thin. And I'm just going to start going over it. And this is just my handwriting, but if you don't know how to make handwriting that you're like comfortable with, you can just print something and then just trace it or use a light box. And I'm not even like making perfect lettering, I'm just being very playful, like with what a kid would write for the dad. If you're creating these cards for licensing, for example, like the best way is to send them looking as best as you can. But sometimes a company, if they like your art, they will just change the lettering and sometimes they'll ch just change the messaging. So try to make it your best. And if you cannot hand letter, and you're doing these for art licensing purposes, then just use like a font and tell your client that it's just a placemaker and that they can add anything they desire. You're doing this for your dad, make sure they love everything you do. My dad does. He always loves everything I make. Now I'm realizing I should probably have written this in Spanish because my dad doesn't know any English, but I'm so used to working in English that I don't even think about creating art like this in Spanish. I should have. Okay, that's perfect. And now we're going to create these and the little rerun. Great. I can also go in now and draw the eyes. You can make them in watercolors, but I find it so much easier to make these small details with pens than with brushes. And you have to do what makes your life easier. That's wet still, so it's not painting over there. So I'm going to leave it just so I don't ruin the paper. Now it's writing again. I'm going to draw the little zipper and I can draw some details with this. Like the edges here. Don't go too heavy into the outlines because it doesn't look as good. But I do like making some details with this. faces are in and this is archival ink and is waterproof and fade proof so i really like it i would wait for it to dry before you paint on top of it but it's pretty good for using with watercolors bring back the watercolors and i'm going to start adding some details 
So I want to add some like fur. And I want my brush to be dry. I'm going to actually redo this. And there you go, like nothing happened. I'm going to add some cheeks. So I don't have a pink here. I have this Kinacrid on rose. I'm going to mix it with a bit of red. And then I'm going to make sure that my brush is super dry. And then add some water here. See, I'm dripping water here. Because I want this to be very, very light. So I'm drying my brush. And grabbing with a very light thing here. It's very subtle. And for the kid, I'm going to use a bit more color. There, and I'm going to let those dry, make sure I don't smudge them. Because that has happened before. Here, for the final details, you can use color pencils if you want. Uh, if you don't have as much control of your brush, that's a really great idea. I'm going to mix a bit of this darker blue and maybe some monglo here and i'm just going to go in and create these lines for the best and then here I want to make that one like blend in and not be like a straight line. I just want it to be like more in the shadow so it's darker here. Great. And now I want to add some lines to these. So I'll just grab some moon glow here. And that's super dark. So I'm just going to add more water. Dry it off. Create some very thin lines. Oops, super dark line. We can just go on top of it and try to pick the color up. And I'm cleaning my brush and just moving this one around and picking the water up. And it's good as, and it's pretty good. Disappeared. Let's make the pockets darker. And now I'm going to make the nose. 
Let's use a black for that. You can use a pen too for this if you don't feel comfortable painting with the brush. Okay, that's perfect. Now I'm just going to fill in the that area. And actually that yellow was very nice, so I'm going to do that. Great. And I always like adding some like foliage. So I'm mixing that yellow with the moon glow and let's try that color. I like that. So I'm going to go very light and I'm going to just freehand some little leaves here. Just because I don't like blank space so much and uh, I always love adding foliage to everything. So this is just a style thing. Great. The only thing I'm going to do is go back with this brown here and... Make this line more obvious. And we can add some details to this shirt, so. Maybe it has a bit of polka dot. Oh, my dad would never wear this shirt. And finally, I'm going to go in with a bit of darker teal here. I'm just adding a bit of that moon glow. And I'm going to create these lines here. And make this part darker, just so you can understand what's happening here. So now it's ready. And what I'm going to do is let it dry, maybe overnight and then just erase it and then I can cut it and give it to my dad. So I've gone ahead and erased everything and now I'm just adding some pencil. I hope you love this and make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, bye.